This is coming out of my grandfather's potting room, potting shed. This is the potting shed. You can see all my pots, garden pillows. And there's still some prizes that my grandfather won at the local agricultural show, still hanging on the wall here. So it had to be re-roofed a few years ago because it was falling down. But anyway, going out the door is how you get to the vine house. And when I was restoring the vine house, one of the things that I knew I had to be, was really important is to attract the pollinators to go inside the pine house. Vine house, pine house, what am I talking about? It's a Sunday. And if you look at here, this sage, it's full of bumblebees and honeybees. Let's see if I can film one close up with the poppies, lovely. Look at the poppy. So, oh, here's one. There's a bumblebee working away diligently. But there's lots of them all over here. But then if you look at those flaps, those timbers run all the way along the, where the roof below the gutter and they're flaps so that the pollinators, when they're flying around, they can fly in there and then they go and pollinate. So I'm attracting pollinators around the vine house to fertilize the, um, the scabies are coming out. These, this is another pollinator favorite. Oop, this one obviously has been pollinated. You can see there is the seed head underneath. Anyway. That was one of the first ones that flowered. And the Canterbury Bells, and then this is an alum. The Black-Eyed Susans, or Rebecca, it hasn't come out yet. And here's more of the Russian sage. There's roses and, of course, foxgloves. And then we go around here. Here's my water lily. I'm so pleased with my water lily. The food there, that's fish food. There's three, excuse me, <coughs> pardon me. There's three fish in there. But the other thing that I've done is planted some Bidens here. This is, pollinators love this. No, oh, it's dying in the center, that's not good. It's, anyway, I'll figure that out. I'm deadheading that one. But you come over here and here's another pollinator, Biden, which the pollinators love at the front so that they will come in and I have the fan going, look, look, my corn, my corn, yay. And my basil is just coming up. I should really go and get some snail shells and sprinkle it around to keep the slugs away. So I still have to plant my um, aubergine and these strawberries have to leave, but you can see that these tomatoes are flowering beautifully and I've spotted my first tomato, green tomatoes right here. Look at that. Now the fans I got when it's really hot, I turn that one on which rotates and that one goes higher because I don't want everything to dry out completely but I need air movement because I don't have, these vents are for air movement and those are for air movement, but it's still, you can see the grape kind of sometimes gets slightly mildewy. So I bought, or it did last year, this year I'm hoping it'll be less so. So the circulation of air will prevent that from happening. Last year, the tomatoes, none of the tomatoes, oh, I've got to pinch that out. Always pinching out the um, little growth spurts. Look, here's another one. You see, I'm pinching that out right there. Pinch. There. Um, none of the tomatoes got mildew because I was diligent about trying to keep the air circulation and clipping their leaves at the bottom so that air passed through. Oops, got to clip that off. There we go. Um, so the air was constantly able to circulate around them. And last year, the grape, I didn't prune back as hard, so I'm pruning it back much harder. 
So the only thing that got mildewy besides the grape were the cucumbers. Here's some planted cucumbers. I still have to plant. There's so much I still have to do. I'm watering and feeding those tomatoes who need to be planted in there. The aubergine need to go into there. Those cucumbers need to go in there and there. Oh, it's never ending, I tell you. Except I love doing it when I am doing it. And organized out here a lot more. These are my calendula that I've got a pot on into bigger pots and return in there. They're great to attract pollinators as well as they attract the green fly. So the green fly will eat the calendula rather than the tomatoes. Little pesticide trick there. Those are my primulas babies. They're doing really well. These are other seedlings. But over here, I've managed to, um, we managed to flatten this area out now and it's much easier to water and look after my baby tree collection. And I'm loving, there's so many different kinds of oaks. I'm gonna go more oak seed hunting because I love having as many different kinds of oaks as possible. You can kind of see this is similar to that. That might be different. That's different. That's different. That's different. Look at the, so there's a varieties of different oak trees. And then over here are my bigger oak trees. These would be, these are about five years old, I guess. So this winter, these, how many oak trees are there here? One, two, three adult oak trees, this plains tree and these horse chestnuts will all have to be planted out. This is a younger oak tree. So all of these will have to be, these are three bird cherries, one, two, Where's the third one? Over there that I did from cuttings. So that's a fig tree for a friend that I'm preserving. But uh, yeah, so those are my trees. These are cuttings that I'm trying to get to go. Oh, what's interesting is these are cuttings that were from a friend's floral arrangement. I'm hoping they'll take. And I did an experiment. I did some there. Then if you come up here, don't mind me rubbish pile. It's not a rubbish pile. Those are useful things. Right here behind this magnificent poppy, I stabbed some in the ground and it looks like one, two might have taken. Three. This one might have taken and this one might have taken and that one might have taken. So that's kind of fun. Anyway, I'm so poppy season is starting, which is kind of fun. So that's the kind of young plant vine house area. And one of my pipe dreams is to continue the vine house out as my grandfather had it from those doors up to this edge here. You can see there's the old wall right there and right there. And that part was known as the peach house. So it was the peach house and the vine house because the vine house had the grape vine and the peach house was here because I'd love to grow peaches again. I love peaches and I just cannot buy supermarket peaches. They're just, they're just, I don't like them. Anyway, my presence of salvias are doing really well. I'm loving them. This rose was a cutting from a friend of mine's garden. I think this is now four or five years old. It's really good and it's really taken off. Another salvia, this is a self sown kind of mallow as there. The lemon tree is doing really well. And I have baby lemons that are gonna be developing. Then over here, the sweet Williams are fantastic. And then over there is another rose that uh, from that cutting of a friend's rose bush. My jasmine is doing okay with the geraniums. And this dog rose is in full bloom. It's kind of taking over this corner. And then the lavender is kind of stuck behind. Anyway, that is, the irises are over. The irises are right there. This is the fence when I was having the yews in there. I've got to bring the rams up and put them in there. So yeah, the sweet williams are doing fantastically well and perfume the air. I should really pick them so that they keep 
reproducing. Anyway, there is a little tour of some of the gardening stuff I've been doing and improving this area here. Um, there was a whole bunch of plants that were growing in there, Crosby, which I gave to my niece. Next stage is up there, that area. Those I'm going to give to my niece. She's got a place in her garden for them. So, yeah, busy times working in the working in this area, making it, always trying to make it easier to um, plant and look after my plants. And all these tomatoes, some of which look like they're rather battered, I shall be planting out in the garden. They're here hardening off so that they're used to the chillier nights and I'm gonna be putting them out. These, these are different seedlings. These aren't tomatoes. I know these aren't tomatoes. That I'm really looking forward to seeing what that is. I know what it is. It's um, Hattie's pin cushion, but I don't know what color it is. So these are, so that's what I've been doing. Some of those kind of things. Oh, and a friend gave me this little rose, which has tiny, tiny rose buds. So that should be kind of interesting when it comes out. Ah, and this um, Black Eyed Susan or Oh, somebody else calls it something else. It's finally flowering. So things are hopping along in the garden. <laughs>